The U.S. and Israel are on high alert, expecting retaliation over an Israeli bombing of Iran's uh, embassy in Damascus. Seven revolutionary guards were killed in the attack on the Syrian capital. It, Iran has warned it's reser it reserves the right to make a decisive response. Tehran says Israeli warplanes were used in a major escalation in Israel's war with its enemies in the region. Benan Ben Taleblu is a fellow, a senior fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, a research institute in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for joining us. He focuses on Iranian political and security issues. Uh, Benan, are we seeing a major regional escalation here if Iran decides to strike? Uh, this would be a serious, serious uh, escalation. Uh, greetings, Melissa. Good to be with you. Uh, it depends a great deal on how, when, and where the Islamic Republic choose to respond, or indeed if they choose to escalate uh, against the Israeli strike that killed uh, several senior uh, Quds Force IRGC extraterritorial operations uh, 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 military persons uh, in Damascus last week. Uh, in essence, one of those individuals was really, you could say, the connective tissue between the IRGC in Iran, the Syrian regime in Damascus, and Hezbollah in Lebanon. There's also stories uh, circulating as of yesterday uh, that that individual may have had a hand in the October 7 Hamas uh, terrorist attack against Israel. Uh, nonetheless, in the past, when the Islamic Republic has responded to perceived or real Israeli threats, it's done so with drones and missiles. but often against innocent civilians uh, in places like Iraq, as they did in 2022 and 24, alleging that uh, these are Mossad bases with no proof. Uh, it's likely you could see some kind of regional conflagration like that again. Uh, but I don't think we're on the path to a major war unless there's a direct attack on Israeli territory, which I would put at low probability but high impact. Now, you've floated some of the possibilities. Uh, is there a general consensus among the experts where the, wh what the primary targets might be and where, where exactly, or is this hotly debated? Uh, it's something between a consensus and a debate. There's lots of folks, uh, yours truly really included, uh, looking at the hardline Iranian press trying to divine uh, based on what is being said currently out of Tehran, as well as the past precedents for how Iran has responded to try to figure out what the Islamic Republic might do. Uh, interestingly, in the past 48 hours, despite lots of tough headlines coming out of Iran, major speeches made it look like the place and the time would come at Iran's own choosing. So it's likely uh, that this could be a terror attack uh, at a potential uh, Israeli target, or Israeli diplomatic facility, Israeli cultural center uh, uh, in places like Europe. Even this is literally something that Iran's ambassador to Iraq, who actually himself, uh, his former ambassador to Iraq, I should say, who himself was a a Quds Force individual floated uh, just a few days ago in the Persian press. Um, there's, of course, also activating the militias, not just against the Israelis, but against the Americans. Uh, part of the strategic logic behind that might be uh, to push Washington to try to constrain Israel. That uh, would be well. an escalation, so though, I mean, from some around. people, right? Uh, indeed. It w it w in my view, it would be an escalation. Uh, but ironically, despite the Islamic Republic knowing that America is the more capable uh, adversary when compared to Israel, uh, there is actually a, a greater willingness to embrace risk even overtly against America when compared to Israel, because the government of the Islamic Republic and its military elite have a different impression about American resolve and American staying power in the region when compared to Israeli. Now, do you think there's any side uh, that can do something to de-escalate the situation? And what would those moves look like? Uh, you know, certainly the Islamic Republic feels pressure, pressure uh, from the acts of resistance, but pressure based on its own ideology to respond publicly. Uh, the question, of course, is the fact that it can't achieve escalation dominance against Israel means that uh, it certainly isn't going to be doing anything to drive a major conflict, at least, you know, uh, so long as they don't strike Israeli territory. Given that, there's very, there's literally nothing that probably could be done to walk the Islamic Republic back. In fact, things that are driving it forward are, you know, the drone program, the missile program. Unfortunately, the more capable the long-range strike capabilities and the more lethal these capabilities have become, uh, the more often you've seen Iran actually uh, be willing to actually embrace risk and, in fact, uh, uh, use these weapons and act on its rhetoric. So, unfortunately, I don't think there's any kind of diplomatic walk back, but I do think strong messaging from Washington uh, that if this does get out of control, uh, these, there will be a swift military response, uh, could can contain the nature of the Iranian military response. Ben Am Ben Taleblu, Senior Fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, thank you so much for joining us.
Thank you. DW correspondent Rebecca Ritters joins us now from Jerusalem. Uh, Rebecca, how seriously should these threats from Iran be taken? Well, that's very difficult to say, Melissa, but I think what is safe to say is that they are being taken very seriously, as you said in your intro there, by the US and Israel especially. Uh, Iran has said that the Israel will regret that strike, that Israel hasn't actually said that it did. It hasn't actually confirmed that it was Israel, but it is uh, generally regarded that it was an Israeli attack. Iran has said that they will regret that attack, that they their military are... are at the ready and they are just deciding how, when and where to retaliate. Now, analysts uh, and officials believe that it will in fact be a, a strike from Iran rather than going through one of their proxies, namely Hezbollah in Lebanon, um, that it could very well be within the next week uh, and that it will likely be on either an Israeli embassy target or something in Israel. As you mentioned, the US targets in the region also possible, but I think more likely that it would be uh, one of those first two that I mentioned. Now, as you say, everyone here on high alert, particularly US forces in the region uh, and Israel itself also uh, on high alert, saying its forces are ready to respond, to retaliate and to, to defend. Um, so I think you know, whichever way you look at it, this is being taken very seriously and it's certainly the biggest escalation we've seen vis-a-vis -vis Iran since the, the conflict began in October. So a very tense situation and things feel kind of imminent. Uh, Iran has so far avoided direct conflict with Israel, though. So if it decides to strike inside of Israel, uh, what are we looking at? A regional war? Well, that's obviously uh, the biggest fear that's certainly dominating the news in Israel and beyond in the region. I mean, that is something that people, uh, the US, Israel, citizens, officials have been concerned about since the beginning. I think you're right to say that both sides uh, have been trying to avoid a direct conflict. And I think that uh, stands. That's certainly what we're hearing from analysts, is that neither side do want to get into that direct conflict. So I think that will determine where we will see this return fire from from Iran, of course, if it is on Israeli soil, there'll no doubt be a response from Israel and it will just depend where and, and what is targeted and how bad perhaps the civilian casualties are uh, that will determine just how quickly uh, this escalates. Uh, you know, if, if it is a more sedate response, then perhaps Israel will hold back for a while. It's really difficult to say at this stage, Melissa, when we just don't know exactly how it's going to play out. But I think we're certainly looking at a, a potentially very large escalation. DW correspondent Rebecca Ritters, thank you so much. In Tehran, thousands turned out to attend a funeral for seven members of the Guard, including two senior generals who were killed in the blast. Clashes between Israel and Iran-backed Hezbollah along the Israeli-Lebanese border have increased since the war in Gaza began nearly six months ago. The funerals took place on Al-Quds Day, an annual event when people in Iran and elsewhere around the world stage pro-Palestinian rallies. Let's bring in my colleague, Anilu Fargolami, for more. Welcome. Uh, why are we seeing this on Al-Quds Day? And what kind of reaction have we seen from within Iran to this funeral? Mm -hmm. From what I heard from uh, pro-democracy activists and ordinary people or uh, read on social media, I can assure you that people in Iran, uh, they don't mourn, but they are happy because IRGC and God's Force are hated among majority of Iranians as they are actively involved in oppressing citizens during uh, various protests, especially in the recent protests in Iran after the death of Jinnah Massa Amini. So um, what we've seen in these um, uh, funeral, like always, is the minority who cooperates with the regime directly, uh, like regime supporters or the people who uh, are financially or ideologically have some interest in the regime. So uh, pro-democracy activists also uh, saying that that this is the perfect timing for the Islamic Republic as they use such events for their own propaganda against Israel and the West. And just uh, briefly before I let you go here, looking at the increasing, increasingly dire security situation, how likely do you think we are at this point to see a direct confrontation between Iran and Israel? 
Um, only in 2024, Israel has conducted uh, more than 30 attacks on Iranian targets in Syria and killed 21 uh, Quds Force members. But there has uh, uh, been no answer to uh, these attacks. I, I, I don't think this time is won't be any uh, direct confrontation as uh, it could drag U.S. to the war uh, with Iran. And it is the least thing that the Iranian regime wants. I need to mention that here that one of the political organizations uh, that belong to the hardliners claim that Zahedi that um, has been killed um, in uh, Syria was involved in the um, plot of the attack of on October 7th in mm. uh, Israel. But I think it's only be uh, attacked by a proxies. Well, Nilofar, thank you so much for that. That is uh, Nilofar Golami.